Hello, welcome everyone to Each One Teach One. This is Sifu Jungle and Sensei Biggs. And today we're gonna to be talking about eschatology, episode six. Welcome everyone. And to start us off, Sensei Biggs, could you please read the definition of eschatology or explain that to us, please? Yeah, good morning, everybody. How you doing? Today I'll be reading the definition of eschatology. And uh, eschatology is uh, spelled E-S-C-H-A-T-O-L-O-G-Y. And uh, the meaning is eschatology is a part of theology concerned with the final events of history or the ultimate destiny of humanity. This concept is commonly referred to as the end of the world or end times. Thanks, everyone. Interesting. Very interesting. So... What comes to mind first things that first thing that I think of is utopia versus dystopia. What are your uh, thoughts on that? What direction do we see humanity uh, heading towards? And are we headed towards uh, a utopia? And if so, what kind of utopia? And or are we headed towards a dystopia, like you see in the movies? those futuristic movies like Mad Max or uh, Judge Dredd or Elysium or um, District 9. Those are a few movies that come to mind right off the top. So uh, um, what you- one in particular that I, I think is really similar, uh, a movie called Demolition Man. Oh, I love that movie. Oh my Wesley God. Snipes and Sylvester Stallone. Um, that's classic a classic movie, man. But it, the movie it was really about what's really going on today. Rich and poor, right? And how the, the, the rich use the poor to make the rich look good. <laughs> you feel me? Like the poor are really that bad, but they're not. The rich just use his henchmen, right? You know, mercenaries, people for hire that do the dirty work, mm-hmm. right? And then the poor get the blame and they, they still become victimized anyway. As policies are still created to prevent them from getting hurt for their own good. <laughs> it's for the greater good, isn't it? <laughs> and, and it's like it's funny with Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd was like, it was a, it was a twist on the movie in the beginning because it was supposed to be about a benevolent future where more or less the police are, you know, they're so given this title of being judge jury and executioner, you know, that whatever choice they they make in the situation is benevolent, right? Mm-hmm. But the twist of the movie is, truth be told, it's really malevolent because they're really manipulating and controlling the people in that way, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so one of his, uh, and I don't want to get a movie away to anybody, but it's really a good movie, man. Uh, There's a little spoiler alert. So on the movie, the original Judge Dredd, it's his his the antagonist, the bad guy, is is supposed to be his clone brother, a, another version of him that's clone. You know what I'm saying? That's sort of like a brother. They call themselves that, and it's good. The movie's ill because his clone brother, he wasn't wrong in what he was saying either. He was more or less like, the world should be free. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There shouldn't be no judges. You know what I'm saying? There shouldn't be this system. So yeah. it, you know, I'm saying that the 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 clone. Yeah, his the, the one that was the bad guy in the movie, his brother who was a clone or something. But the movie the movie is really touches on that on both movies, Demolition Man and Judge Dredd. And it's crazy, you know, those are the times um Sylvester Stallone in the 90s was really making headways, but all his movies have always had a political leaning of you know where it, it's really not, you know what I'm saying, I like like Rocky. That's a good one. Rocky, oh man, Rocky, it proved in that movie that your heart could take you to, you know what I'm saying, to the heights of your reality. That's what I get from the movie every time I see or I hear the music, you know what I'm saying? Make you feel like, you know, to never give up. Mm-hmm. So these metaphysical movies are deep. And it'd be the same actors in them. He was in Rambo too. You know what I mean? The same right. principles in Rambo. Yeah. He fought a whole, in the beginning, he fought a whole group, of, a whole time of corrupt police officers. By himself. Hmm. 
Okay. And they were just like mad at him because they were anti-war. Some crazy stuff. It was deep. And it had a political leaning too. Because a lot of people don't know that. A lot of veterans from the 1960s uh, and 70s and 80s, when they were coming back home from the Vietnam War and all them other wars and things, you know, the anti-war campaign was wrong. So they were looked at like they were really, like, really bad. They weren't given the same respect that they're given now. So, like, a lot of them that came from the Vietnam, they had a lot of, like, issues medically and that never got taken care of. Stuff like Agent Orange and all the above, where it was, like, chemical weapons that were used by us. But they didn't, they, they were in the, you know what I mean, in the battle as Marines or Army platoon, and they didn't get, you know what I mean, word that the bomb that was being dropped on it was napalm, <laughs> created by Monsanto. You know but, what I'm saying? But, but it's interesting that they're, they're broadcasting this stuff in the movies, and it's kind of, was that, predictive programming, so that we're being exposed to, or we're literally being um, uh, conditioned into. So... Do we have control over our, our destiny as a, as a human species or is it all predestined? These are kind of the questions um, that I'm thinking about right now. And also um, where, you know, like obviously these Hollywood movies that tell us that, um, you know, the future is, is headed in this dystopian um, direction. Do you agree with that? Or do you feel like we have the opportunity to change things around? Yeah, I uh, think that we have the opportunity to change things around because every all of those is just like you said, predictive programming that is based on multi-dimensional reality. So those are all pre potential realities that could occur based on people thinking a specific way, right? Mm -hmm. But truth be told, you know what I'm saying? That's not what it is, really. You know what I'm saying? Truth be told, what it is is... Uh, it's just a glimpse into different possibilities. You know what I'm saying? And there's ways to change it if you start with yourself, with your mind. And um, it's a good movie that's about to come out about this. What's it called? The Strange Part Two. Oh. That's good. <laughs> and, and the title, the subtitle has to do with the multiverse or something like that. Into the multiverse, or something like that. Nice, nice. Mm-hmm. So, so in other words, you're saying that we do have the ability, we have the potential for sure, but we also, what, what are the chances? I mean, does it come down to chance or is it just all predetermined what's going to happen or, you know, or is it, is it really, I mean, they say it's really up to us, right? So mm -hmm. does that mean a collective us? I mean, is it, does it mean the entire human species that has to change or is it just a small percentage? Like, you know, the hundredth, mon hundredth monkey effect. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think uh, I'm leaning towards that being true. The hundredth monkey effect, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. um, metaphysics is really, is the truth, man. You know, when you start really getting into it, and learning about these these principles and laws, yeah, you start understanding that uh, what we call reality is shaped to what we believe it is. <laughs> you feel? Me? Um, yeah. <laughs> so whatever you believe to be true, which doesn't have to be the same as me, is called reality. Right. You feel me? And no one can tell you different because your reality is what your reality. <laughs> and your reality could be part of the illusion yeah. you create all these barriers or blockages or um yeah like um holograms in your mind because the mind is a hologram or the mind is a holographic um device in a way right mm -hmm. and it projects this holographic universe around us but it's not like consciousness depends on on the brain to exist no consciousness already is there it just manifests it, it manifested in perfection within the human being right yeah so so it's, uh, say more if you could about um like the de maybe some give some details to our audience like what uh the future may look like in terms of um, what's going on today if you could do that 
Yeah, um, revealing revelations is what's going on. Oh. And the word apocalypse, A P O C A L Y P S E, right? Um, the 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 definition of that word means the revelation to reveal, right? Sorry. It's crazy. So you know, when you grow up, you know, hearing that word in pop culture, you think it's something negative. But when you do the, you know. The research and you look it up you see oh it just means to reveal the revelation interesting you know so so we're revealing things are being revealed to us right now the age of Even revealing about not being out so truths that cannot be you know taken back like you know what i'm saying people are becoming aware regardless even if they choose not to it's still a choice of free will mm -hmm. so but now you have a choice to know for yourself you feel me so what does that mean to uh, free oneself and what is what what are some things that are being revealed right now in terms of truth in alignment with truth okay number one um, our society is ran by a few that's the ultimate truth right there that's not a conspiracy theory that's, that's not, now the that's truth. money <laughs> exactly and people can have the majority vote, but the other per person can still pull out a win. Um, another truth is the media has power to lie to you. <laughs> so we're not joking here. Yeah, um, so. Yeah, you're damn right about that. I just gave you three truths, right? So three reasons that can lead to my observation as being true. <laughs> so my opinion can now be stated as a fact based off of three, you know, uh, actual current events. Absolutely. Taking place as we, we speak. So, uh, yeah. But our, you know, like, let's just assume, you know, our, I mean, we know that our audience, a large part of our audience, pretty much is aware of the fact that there is that, you know, political scheme going on and like conspiracy, um, conspiracy fact that is going on around us. Like we said before, it's just about, you know, money. It's more about power and control, which they already have it. Um, it's, it goes deeper than that. We know that it gets into the spiritual realm. So like, Tell us what you know more so about um, the things that are being revealed in terms of spirituality, if you could. Um, okay. Because I know it's, you talk about this all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I'll say this. From a, a religious, spiritual point of view, a fact that's occurring is that they found more books of the Dead Sea Scrolls Ooh. have been released to the public nice everyone can go research that you know so the catholic church has released some other scrolls or other chapters in the dead sea scrolls that are now you know able to be called a part of the biblical canon you know so they so that's 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 the spirit of truth right there it is that's a huge one. Um, I say another one that's really that's really out there right now. Okay, this, this is a, it's not spiritual, but it has to deal with your body. You know, it has to deal with you know what I'm saying. The fact that we no longer have to wear masks. There we go. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> that is very spiritual. <laughs> that is very spiritual. You're right. <laughs> and what is that? That's covering our. I mean, it's covering our chakra system, the, the throat and the chest. So, yeah. um, but I know that you talk a lot about like light, you know, there's never been division within the light. So can you hit on that a little bit more in terms of like- Yeah, but when I say that, I mean, like when you look at the prism, so that's what I feel we are as human beings. Our brains are prism. You did P-R-I-Z-M. Mm -hmm. And when light hits it, 
it breaks apart. Mm -hmm. And that it breaks apart is like the colors of the electromagnetic spectrum. And I feel as if that's what we all are inside our, our, our mind. You know what I'm saying? Our brain and our mind is based on that same principle. And so meaning that we're all one in our brains. The universe is all one. Definitely. And we all have that same potential. So that makes us all one, just pieces of the one, right? Raindrops. You know what I'm saying? In a puddle, ocean called the universe. That's what we are. And even more or less, we also eat single as sand on the beach. You feel me? That's what the universe is. So yeah. I think uh, that's that's what, what we what we are, and, and I feel as if uh uh, since we have that potential within us, you know, we can maximize it. Definitely. And the word that they use now in the, in the corporate culture is called optimizing it. Yeah. The optimal. So yeah. it's very interesting because, um, like you said, like a single particle of uh, a single grain of sand is actually what's real. I mean, is, is actually what creates the whole beach, you know, and there's no, there wouldn't be a beach. There wouldn't be a such thing as called a beach if you didn't have a single, that single uh, grain of sand. And the same thing applies to the human spirit. You know, you wouldn't have a human spirit, quote unquote, human spirit comes from the individual human, mm -hmm. you know, the collective, uh, the collective version of humanity or humanity exists because the individual exists so without it's just like the forest you know force as geo where griffin says there's no such thing as a force and he kind of gave us that example of like how there's only a tree and trees individual trees but there's no such thing as a forest you know um but yeah i mean anyway not to get on the tangent i think uh, it's this is all part of uh, what you were saying in terms of the prism and all being one, because at the end of the day, like, <laughs> it's only, I don't want to say that we're all clones of one another because we're all individual uh, spirits, but at the same time, you know, we have been broken apart and divided from the original source, you know, and, and, I know you talk a lot about ether and you know the 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 etheric realm but that we can talk i don't know if you want to talk about that or you want where do you want to lead this discussion just yeah i think that's the final frontier uh going back to whence we came the original form i feel as though you know life is a cocoon stage for the growth of the soul, like a butterfly, you know what I'm saying? That before it's a butterfly, it goes through growth, right? In the cocoon stage as a caterpillar, right? Mm -hmm. well, that's what, what we are. The human body is a, is a vessel, it's a caterpillar, and it has a soul within it. That's the true us. And the soul has to go through maturity, has to grow. And with experience, it grows and becomes stronger. It's nice. And, and, and then when, you know, it's time for it to hatch, that's when you die. And, and sometimes- the, the physical death. Yeah. Just to be clear. As long as you mature, yeah, exactly, that's what I'm saying. And as long as you mature naturally, you feel me, where the death is not onslaughted by an unnatural cause, right? Uh -huh. Then you mature at a good level. And it's like more or less, if you if it happened, if you die like immaturely, prematurely or whatever, like a baby or something. Yeah, yeah. And you probably get reborn again. Because <laughs> you gotta, it's a growth of the soul. So the more the multi-dimensional spiritual reality is all about the soul. It's about ether. And then you know, it just uses the lower third dimension and all that physical matter inside just to grow the ether. Feel me? Yeah. The ser the serpent biting his own tail, which is ether biting his own tail. So for ether to be ether, it needs to grow itself. 
Yeah. <laughs> for, for, for the beyond to be beyond, it knows it needs to be, you know what I'm saying, the beginning of the beyond itself. You know what I'm saying? That, yeah. That um if I may just clarify real quick, we're talking about a physical death. That doesn't mean the spirit dies or the soul dies. There's no you can't because again, going back to the first law of thermodynamics, you energy can be what? Neither created nor destroyed. Yeah. So I even believe that, you know, you can prolong this life, this physical life. And it's fine. I mean, if people don't want it's not, it's up to the individual, but I do believe that's part of our uh, human potential is to, we used to live a lot longer than we do now. I mean, even in the, the old Testament of the Bible, it talks about how Abraham and all of his uh, descendants used to, or uh, all of his uh, pr uh, children uh, used to live like 700, 800, 900 years old. So, and then at some point, it talks about how our our lifespan was shortened to down to 120 years. But now I feel like, you know, this is tying into epigenetics and how we now know that consciousness affects not just our reality, but our physical biology. <laughs> You know, our physiology, our, our DNA. Mm -hmm. And so this is all part of the age of revealing of what we were talking about earlier, you know? And, uh, but yeah, I mean, the Ouroboros that you were talking about earlier was also, you know, that's, that's um, something that we can clarify for people too, because that can also be inverted and, and turned into what, we know as the lockdown, you know, equation, you know, and um, I know Seth Boza also talks a lot about that, you know, and people can check out his work on the zero um, be being manipulated by the uh, three, nine and, you know, three, nine and the six and the three, nine, six. Uh, sorry, that that is not that is being uh, triangulated, I believe. I want to, um, yeah, people could verify that, but it's the zero, uh, it's a uh, two, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Two, four, five, seven, and eight. Sorry, that are that are actually being used as the lockdown equation, and that just means like you know, this cycle of like reincarnation is being put on repeat and it just keeps going, 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 going until, you know, you break out of it. Mm -hmm. So that's a liberating thing if once you break out, but like that's that butterfly effect that, uh, that butterfly, you know, this human spirit turning into a butterfly from a caterpillar, like you were talking about. Definitely, definitely. And what's this beyond? What is it? You were about to say, what is the beyond? Afterlife. What, and what is afterlife? The life after death. <laughs> the life after Give death. us a little bit more explanation than that. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit world. Uh-huh. The ether world. The world of imagination. That is a true source, I do think, because in order for anything to manifest, it has to come from an idea. And where do ideas come from? The afterlife, the beyond. Which is what you just said, imagination. Imagination. And I know, I know William Blake used to hold um, imagination above all as on, on the same level as, as God. That's right, man. That's real. That's it, yeah. Because it's it's tying into what you said about the beyond. That's it's basically the same term. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where we're headed to. You know, but it's not for the sake of just heading towards that one direction, right? There's an ultimate purpose. What is that ultimate purpose of? That is the only direction to head. Right, but what is the ultimate reason it's not just for the sake of being spiritual it's it's uh no it's the sake of uh ascension 
of being the greatest potential energy pulse that you can at a given time. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's powerful. You want to be the strongest pulse. So you want your soul to be the strongest resonance. Mm -hmm. And so, because you're a spark. So you don't want to just die out. That's right. Yeah. Um, We're all, we all have that flame. We are flames. Flame. We are all that, flames. I mean, we're not flamers. <laughs> no, we ain't flamers, but we're flames. They just, you know, inverted that <laughs> that shit. Uh, <laughs> but it's all part of the kind of the same flame, the human flame, you know, that, that needs to ignite. And um, when your passion dies, you die. That's right. So everybody... Just think about that for a second, you know, like think about what you're passionate about. What are you most passionate about? But remember that passions can also control you too. The ultimate, I, you know, ultimate goal would be to be able to be in control of yourself. And that's where our Know Thyself platform comes into existence too, comes into play. Um, because, you know, without knowing thyself, you can't control your passions. Your passions can imprison you, it can enslave you, but they can also serve as something greater. Yeah, and that's really what it's about. It's about attaining something greater. It is. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Why don't we take a, a short uh, five minute break and we'll come back. How about that? All right. That's cool. All right. See you on the other side, everyone. <laughs> uh, welcome back, everyone. This is Seafood Jungle and Sensei Biggs. Uh, we're just having a little bit of a discussion about fading away. <laughs> and, um, you know, that that passion that we have in all of us that that you know, drive the motivation we have to, to um, push towards push things to the next level. That eventually may fade away, but the ultimate goal is to harness it at the right moment. If you this brings to mind that if you have that fire burning so bright within yourself, you have to watch out and make sure you don't burn too quickly. Because what happens if you burn too quickly? That fire will just fade away in the in untiming, you know, in, in the you know in the inappropriate timing. Whereas if you have an ultimate goal, you want to save that energy for that that right time and unfold yourself, be able to express yourself in the ultimate form in that right moment. And of course, it's like Sensei Biggs was talking about earlier. Your whole life is a piece of art, you know, so whether or not you're going to be, you know, fading away one moment, you might be a little bit more, you know, yin than yang, or more, you might be more yang than yin in one moment in your life. That's fine. Just go with the flow. Just be like water, as they say. So um, any thoughts? Sensei yeah. Biggs? Yeah. You got to, you know what I'm saying, roll with the punches. You feel me? You got to understand yourself that life is a piece of art in motion, right? Definitely. And so you paint your picture how you choose, you feel me? And then you'll be able to, you know, take control of the outcome of your masterpiece. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to be out there blaming others for your shortcomings on you not having the proper materials to paint your masterpiece. Nah. What you want to do is always be aware of the picture that you're painting and 
And if it's something that you don't like, change it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How you change it up is what you allow in your reality. Big. Definitely. That's so cool. if your reality is warped, <laughs> um, who gets to determine whether or not your reality is warped and whether you're living in an illusion or li living in alignment with truth? We do. We get to determine that. So this is kind of like part of the, again, the age of revealing, because we need to understand that there is a difference between living in illusion and living in truth. There is no, um, as we said before, the moral relativism and being in relativism in general can be a good or bad thing, you know, like, it, the, but there is, let's just be honest, there is no your truth versus my truth. There is an absolute. And um, we know this through nature, just studying nature. That is absolute. That is. So people on, try not to understand, you know, no, we should, we're not here to dictate what, you know, necessarily truth is, but we're here to um, uncover and expose what it is. Because there are certain things that we can just through a deconstructive process, taking taking away what is not true in order to come to the truth. That's that's really the best formula that I've come across in, in terms of my my research and study. So, um, yeah. More, more or less, I think uh, we all have our own version of the truth. And we're just coming together to create or identify a larger truth. You feel me? So the more that we collaborate and we have partnerships with other individuals, that is the truth revealing itself. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Because we identify aspects of reality through observation that we all can agree with. And that's what becomes the outlook of what we know as the truth. And finding that common thread between the differences is important, right? Yeah because it's not like like i was saying earlier it's not your truth versus my truth i don't i don't i think what you were saying is different than that because different versions of the like the truth has is multifaceted would you agree with that oh uh, yeah there's many different you know what i'm saying aspects because we're all different mm -hmm. so our perceptions and our prisms and our mind is different you know what I'm saying? The vibratory uh, effects, right? And those effects could be, you know what I'm saying, also looked at as whatever the observer has bias towards, right? Yeah. So depending on what we like and don't like, we shape what the truth is. You know what I'm saying? And if it's unknown to us, then I think we have a obligation and duty to respectively you know, take the steps to learn what that truth is. Vice is already coming to a predetermined, you know what I mean, factor on what the truth is based on how we feel. Right. How we logically can identify and break it down. See what I'm saying? So yeah. that's what happens to us. We focus more or less on uh the solution in the fastest way to something. Vice is <laughs> taking time to analyze it and make sure it's the best quality solution for our quality of life, right? Yep. Yeah. That reminds me about the awareness, you know, it's, it's, um, there's, you just said, take your time to analyze. Sometimes it's, you know, analyzing requires you using that third eye within yourself, that, that uh, you know, ability to see without your eyes, but with that, you know, the inner eye. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you have a lot of trauma, you can't at that moment because it's, it's calcifying that third eye, mm -hmm. you know, so part of being a part of uh, developing that awareness requires that inner eye, the usage of the inner eye and also the feeling into different energies, you know, so um, 
you you need these tools in order to be able to analyze your environment and to see the greater picture. If you can't use those tools, if you, if you don't have access to those tools uh, that I just mentioned, you're going to be, you know, having a hard time and it's, it's okay, but be patient with yourself, but also understand that it's, it's necessary to reach the next levels of, of awareness, you know, so. Yeah. <clears throat> always stay on point and be aware you know awareness is the only thing that really keeps us going it's the it's the fuel and energy of accepting the reality that you chose it to be you know so when you know that you're aware and you have the vitality to stay aware then you know you're you're headed somewhere at a great pace because <clears throat> no matter what, no one can take away your awareness. You feel me? And that means that you're always on point. And that's the ultimately, key to always stay on point. Yeah, ultimately, that's true. Mm -hmm. Of course, you could be traumatized and then be, you know, fracture your psyche and everything. But being aware also is understanding, like you said, uh, of being aware of what's in your unconscious mind. Because a lot of our our um, actions are are dictated, as Carl Jung used to uh, mention in his books, that our most of our actions are are pre you know dictated by our in, in, these instincts inside of our conscious unconscious, you know, and these instincts are primal. You know, they they basically we oh why do we want to go over in that direction because we're guided by these inner these inner instincts, these urges, these passions. Mm -hmm. So we can easily become possessed if we're not, we can be become uh, possessed by these passions if we're not careful, you know, so. Yeah, you're right. And that's, that's really why the ancients used to talk about demons and angels, because really, I mean, it's just a name, but they're entities. They're, these are forces of energy. They're spiritual forces that are that are alive and you give them more power and that you they become more alive when you feed them your energy totally totally say that again that's right mm -hmm. so in order to get to the next level in terms of do we want we have to first decide do we want a utopia and what kind of utopia do we want or do we want to go and head in the direction of a dystopia, which is, you know, disorder, chaos, and, uh, the, you know, the, the, <laughs> basically in a, in, um, the, an amplification of what we have already today, the rich and the poor, you know, being divided and no middle class. Yeah. Um, do we want that? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, and I think what we need to as a society start understanding is what powers do we have that we can control that could prevent those policies from taking place, right? That would affect our lives in that manner. So that's what we got to start looking yep. at. Like I said, right. look at the law. Go and go read what your city council, you know, what are they voting on on your behalf as representing you, right? Because we have a representative. Then look at your mayor. What is his uh, <clears throat> beliefs and the issues and the policies, right? And then you take it to the governor of your state. Start looking into the policies that they're accepting and they're passing on your behalf. And then, you know what I mean? You take it all the way up to the national level. But you have to learn where you, what part in the process do you play? You know, that's the key is to know your power. That, yeah, you do have a voice. And they'll say that and they'll try to use a propaganda to make you think you don't. But it was still written in black and white that you do. And that's our responsibility to 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 learn that we first have to be curious about what, what's it all about. And you know, like you said, uh starts with the city council, right? Mm -hmm. And learning what that is, like can you explain to our audience like what what is that <laughs> what is that entity good question um more or less i can uh lead them in the right direction so they can learn for themselves mm -hmm. 
So look up uh, on Google uh, for your location. Start off with you know your city, your state, your address, where you're located, and uh, just look up city council for that area, and that's the start, right? Right. And mo most of your states and your municipalities, province, no matter where you're located on this planet, it has a governing body. Uh, that governing body is known as our government, local as well as national. So we have to learn uh, who are our representatives and be logical and understand that there's a process when you want to speak to them. You know what I'm saying? You have a process to, you know, reach out and communicate with them and they have a right and a duty to answer you back. You Definitely. know, it's like when they tell people, call this person's office and tell them that you're voting no on proposition so-and-so or yes on proposition so-and-so. So, so that shows you that you do have the power. You just have to exercise it. And be on record that you exercised it, right? Be on record showing that you took that, you know. That's so funny that you said that. That acceptance and your duties. It's called civic duties. And you said the word exercise. What happens, you know, like when you don't exercise? Oh, man. That's a good thing. If you don't right. use it, you, you lose it, right? Say it again. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's right. It's a muscle. You got to exercise your rights. If you don't have, you know, if you don't exercise your rights, you'll lose it. That's right. Like a muscle. It'll start deteriorating yes. through government, through representatives that don't care about you and me. They just care about their own personal goals and ambitions. And the only reason that we need to have representatives is because we need, we have not represented ourselves. We're not self-governed yet, but we're getting there. So this is all part of the unfoldment of the self process. Yeah. And the process of individuation and um, transformation and transfiguration. So, uh, if you ask me, uh, like, what what would a utopia look like? Well, the version of a utopia, first of all, we have to go down that rabbit hole and, and understand that that means more so like a collective, um, well, both utopia and dystopia are collective changes in terms of humanity and what that would look like in uh, a human civilization would look like. Yeah. But the difference between a utopia and dystopia is that utopia would be more um, of the human civilization being in 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 order uh, in uh, in a in a kind of um, oneness. You know, we would all be one in our our way of thinking. A dystopia would be more like a divide of our way of thinking between the rich and the poor. And, and um, it's funny because duality exists in both. You can have oneness in the dystopia where all the people at the bottom think alike and then all the people at the top think alike. And then you can also have a oneness in a utopia where all the people in general just have, or uh, you know, that, that I don't want to say hive mind, but um, Again, there's duality even within oneness. So, <laughs> you know, it gets complicated. So which direction do you want to take it? Uh, I said a bunch of words that, you know, they do mean something, but you just have to figure it out. It's not like, um, I think you guys are, you know, you guys know where I'm going with that. So pretty sure that we don't want to all be enslaved and that we don't want to be oppressed because, because we're sick and tired of that shit. You know, so we need to actually figure out why we're being oppressed, you know, and what are the, you know, what direction we want to, like, how do we, what direction do we head in to not be oppressed? Yeah, totally, totally. We definitely want to find inner peace and then have, you know, outer peace, you know, being that projection of our inner peace. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And that would be in my definition, that will be the type of utopia that I would strive for strive towards. 
we just we just have to be very careful not to fall in the uh the mob mentality and the the group think and uh boiling down boiling everything down to the lowest common denominator and like you said sensei biggs it's about yeah. justice it's about honor and respect yeah and balance and balance bro say uh could you say again the uh five principles yes love peace truth freedom justice and it's all based on equality that's right that's right everything else is a is a pretty much a distraction yeah totally dude um and uh we just gotta focus within mm -hmm. then you sharpen the steel with others meaning mental sharpen of the steel definitely right your mind should be like a blade cutting through that's reality, right the yeah. of reality there's a reason why that sword the sword is a symbol in the tarot of intellect and the mind yeah that's one of the reasons yeah so so keep your mind sharp as a sword you know <clears throat> and you gotta cut through the jungle the weeds the words. that's right and what happens when you pull a weed out uh, if, if you don't pull it out by its root it regrows right something like that yeah it'll just resurface it'll start taking over and you know that's, that's what we gotta kind of do we don't want to be crazy with it some weeds are necessary you know Word. but like you don't want to either extreme is not good that's why we always it always comes down to balance and it's a it's it's knowing the the pendulum swing but i would have to say like a civilization that is striving towards utopia you know, even if that's if that's even what we want, because I, it, it, you know, some people don't even believe in that. You know, and I can, I can understand why, because as you know, let's say we have the majority of humans on the on the planet are are awakening to their to this, you know, their inner light, and they're shining that light so bright. There's still going to be that darkness that's starting to set in. You know, oh, yeah, totally. and and then. Same thing if the if majority of humans are increasingly becoming darker, then they're still still gonna have that those few individuals that are shining their light. Well, they're like a yin yang. It is. That's right. Yes. Going back to the yin yang principle. So um, whether or not it's you know one hundred percent utopia, that's you know I don't foresee that to be the case, but you know uh let's just say let's just say that there is a utopia out there in in the near future this this that human that humans are striving towards what i think that would look like is all humans on a certain level of consciousness uh being in tune with nature and the natural and natural law and understanding natural law respecting natural law understanding that you know there are seven those seven hermetic principles you know going back to the seven hermetic principles and you have else to start off they would understand the law of mentalism the law of correspondence the law of rhythm the law of polarity the law of gender and there's probably one the, the law of cause and effect cause and effect that's right I don't know if that's seven or not. I didn't count, but <laughs> you guys can check those out. So, and I didn't say it in order. It doesn't matter. Just read up on it. Because those are all things that dictate how the universe works. And we should all know this by now. You know, this is, this is the time for everyone to know. And if you don't know, you don't know. And you need to know. Well, you don't want to know or you don't want to know there's exactly. something inside you you have to you know you don't have to do anything you have free will and that's the beauty of it there's beauty within everything yeah totally there's a balance within it you just have to be aware of it 
pay attention to it. You know? Yeah. Then you can tip the scales as needed. That's right. That's right. That's right. Back to the the goddess Ma'at, the the Lady Justice. Amen to that. That's right. Keep your heart as light as a feather, everyone. Definitely. You don't want to like carry any burdens that overwear, overwhelm you and overwear your body and your mind. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So you want to release these things, release the stress. Don't hold on to it. You know what I mean? And that's the key to this existence is balancing your heart. Right? Nice. So having a, a, a calm, compassionate heart, you live a, a better life. You know what I mean? Than being in anger all the time. Okay. Yeah. And you have the even reflecting in the in our own biology. You have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Uh, yep. And you have which which one is the uh, the one that is about fight or flight? It's this, it's the um, the, the sympathetic, right? It's fight I mean, or flight. I always get them confused too. I think I think it's the sympathetic. I could be wrong. Everyone check out the sympathetic versus parasympathetic uh, mm -hmm. um, modes of our our body. One is about relaxation, and one is about fight or flight. Well, now there's fight or flight or freeze, but that's the worst. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. So this is the going back to the yin yang principle again. So um, so anyhow, I mean, that that is part of what uh, utopian civilization would look like in my mind. And, and just those of us that know these principles, imagine just everyone knowing that and being in harmony with nature, being able to talk to animals, get, getting back to the communication with nature, because we've been so far removed from uh, nature through this rat race. We're so busy in our everyday lives that we forget that we're part of nature and that yeah. we're one with nature. Exactly. Exactly. So we totally, we totally, I think, are subconsciously programmed to be detached, <laughs> both figuratively and, you know, literally. And what I mean by literally, we wear souls on our feet. Right, instead of our bodies touching the ground itself, we have something in the middle of it. Yeah, the, like our clothes are probably not good for us, you know. Yeah, if the closest thing that would be good for us would be something more natural, more organic, but we've been accustomed to this synthetic material that we wear, and it's all fine and dandy, just take it off sometimes and, and, and go roll around in, in, in the grass or, you know, lay, lay on the ground and look up at the sky and watch the clouds, you know, yeah. and, and communicate with the air and all the elements, air, water, earth and fire mm -hmm. and spirit. And then you will feel the difference between, you know, what is real, what is not real. So, and the, you, back to the original question, because I do, I was thinking about it, the uh, type of societies we want or we're seeing being played out, dystopian versus utopian. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody in their right minds would want a utopian civilization. Yeah. So I believe if we all want the same thing, then our life purpose should be to work towards that goal. I agree. So let's all work towards trying to make our life and our way of being a utopian society. So it starts with us first inside choosing to be utopians and not dystopians. That's right. Exactly. And that also means like respecting those that are. It just boils down to respect, you know, don't and, and not imposing your will upon another and violating somebody else's free will, even if that means that they're destructive. But what extent does that go to? Does If you have a psychopath killing everything in its path, are you supposed to stop it? I would think so. 
Bees and bees will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> it's about, you know, if you're not in direct threat of something, then you just leave it alone. But that is, yeah. the, you know, the problem is, is that society likes to take on the initiative of, oh, it's affecting the community. We need to do something about it. And um, that's where the line gets blurred in my mind. It's like, well, where do you draw the line? You know, because whoever is the one controlling the energy of the crowd, <laughs> exactly. So, what if the crowd is manipulated? Exactly. There you go. <laughs> Which is why, you know, again, there's crowd psychology and the mob rule, mob uh, mentality. And Edward Bernays really knew about that, and he he was the one that actually was a, you know, one of the biggest, um, biggest wigs that were perpetrating all that propaganda and and, and, it's, and, it, and it's so corporate you know so huge like the media in, industry is not going anywhere anytime soon no so who's holding the wheels of power of it controls the, what we call the free world and the market so we have to learn how to start manipulating it for ourselves as well exactly and that's and that's understanding that um you know all the isms out there whether it's socialism communism nationalism or capitalism or a different type of isms they're all being controlled mm -hmm. you know <laughs> by the same individuals mm -hmm. and they're not even um yeah so that's part of it mm -hmm. so um would you like to talk about anything else today or are we gonna no that was really cool we touched on the main topic and we expanded from there definitely okay and we brought it back to how it all interconnects on what we are actually always promoting sorry yeah so why don't you uh sensei biggs if you could just close out with a you know final statement as to what what is what our audience is uh what our audience can expect in the near future wholeness that's what we're going to expect that's right and that's what we're looking forward towards being whole within ourselves and whole with the universe and others that's right wholeness, everyone. wholeness. see you guys on the other side <laughs>